FinCons is a systems integrator consulting design agency that originally started in Europe and is now here in the US. And the reason I bring it up is because FinCons for many years has been developing HBB TV interactive TV apps that are in production in Europe. So last year, FinCons came to the US and we transferred that knowledge, those designs, into ATSC3. We built those designs from a proper design perspective into uh, an actual software development uh, along with the, with the NAB that's been presented to the market that we are releasing here at the show, okay? So what I'm going to show you is what's possible in uh, a hybrid TV app. It is 100% using ATSC3 technology. It is running on an ATSC3 box. You can see this live in our booth or in the NAB pilot booth in the North Hall. So for this presentation, I simply want to show you the design, tell you some of the design interesting things that come into it, because using HTML5, anything is possible, right? So if anything is possible, how are we going to design for the consumer who's used to having a, a, a television app through a set-top box, through having a connected TV, but now we have a whole new paradigm that's using a browser. All it is is a browser, okay? It's simply HTML5, and with that, you have simple web technologies to build an app. The trick is, you do not want to just build a website, right? This is still a television. So, just a brief on what this technology is. I'm assuming most of you know, but just to give a high-level description, right? So, NATSC3. You have a feed that comes in from the broadcaster. In that broadcast feed is also data, is also media, is also URLs, okay? Coming over the air through the broadcast one way. Those URLs also connect, can connect out through broadband, right? Through a basic internet site, right? So you can create an experience that is being fed from the broadcast feed or if your television is connected to the internet from the broadband feed, okay? And how that works is an HTML5 browser that is on your television. So you have the application that's running. In this example, it's the grid on the bottom that you can see. The browser actually fills the entire screen, but it's invisible in the middle where the video layer in the back is being played, okay? So you interact with the television, still through a remote control, but what you're interacting with is an HTML5 browser. So I'm just going to start. It's a quick video as a demonstration. Uh, we just recorded the actual someone clicking around in the app, and it'll give you an idea of what is possible. So we have multiple different grid capabilities. We have video on demand. We have the ability to launch apps. All of these things are possible through an ATSC3 app. And this is an actual run, one that is running.
So again, that's an actual app that's running that is using H, or, uh, ATSC3 technology software, an HTML5 browser that's running on top of a television. Okay, so we have, it looks like a lot of other connected TV apps, a lot of things that you've seen before, but knowing the technology constraints and knowing what is possible with ATSC3, there's a lot of things in the background that you need to be aware of and need to think of when you're designing these apps for your broadcast station. So first, these apps need to be simple. Drop dead, simple. You always say, you never know who's going to pick up the remote, a nine-year-old or a 90-year-old. So they need to be able to know how to use it. Always make sure your viewer knows where they are and how to get back, and most importantly, watching TV, because that's why they're there in the first place. Provide feedback. Every time you click a button, the user needs to know what's happening. They are going to be uh, frustrated quickly in your app and stop using it if they don't think that the remote control is interacting with them. Uh, second to last is you can pick a navigation paradigm. Rows, vertical, horizontal, different ways to navigate through the app. There are some traditions that are out there, but we also have this ability now to push the envelope a little bit. However, the advice we give is use the same navigation paradigm throughout the app. Don't make it a horizontal uh, carousel scrolling and then suddenly switch to vertical scrolling. You'll lose the, you'll lose the user. Okay, and again, we'll say it over and over again, keep it simple. Remember, lean back experience, this, they are here to watch TV. So I wanted to go through the app that you just saw and a few of the things that um, are design considerations with ATSC3. Remember, this is live, this is free, this is over the air apps that you're, that you're watching. Okay, so when you're designing for these apps, first, as I said, you can get media, you can get rich content coming through broadcast, or coming through broadband, right? The consumer may not always be connected through broadband. So you have to design for broadcast. You can put a lot of data in that feed, but when you do that, you also limit the broadcast feed, right? So your resolution's gonna go down. So we design for a very limited media interaction in the broadcast feed. We kind of always kind of say, what's on now and next? in a simple image, title, and description, right? These are the types of things you put in the broadcast feed and then URLs for the broadband feed to have a much richer media experience. Program Grid. Program Grid, uh, been, uh, tried and true, is definitely the most uh, common and popular interface to any television interface or any television design uh, for the viewer, right? It gives time and context to everything. Using the example I said before, we typically would load 24 hours worth of data, simple data, and then when they try to scroll to the next day, that's when you start filling up through the broadband feed for data. The quick guide. So a quick guide is a simple way to scroll the channels that are on now, okay, of all of the different channels. So it is the paradigm for the the viewers, there's, you know, uh, arguably, um, you know, a, a, a few still many millions of users that watch TV over the air with broadcast, they're used to channel up, channel down, right? Connected TV is a search and select paradigm, okay? So a, a quick guide gives you the ability to use both. You're scrolling through what is on now, but you're checking it out before you actually change the channel. And then there's a channel guide. So remember that each broadcast channel has its own app. So think of it like each broadcast channel is its own website, right? So when you change channel, you load, change the channel, you load a new website. And in that, you have that broadcaster is in control. So that broadcast channel is going to want to show you what they have on next, right? So this design sample is a channel guide. It is one, what's on next. We used a constant in the time blocks, right, that give you equal real estate for each of the, each of the shows that are on. So if it's a three-hour football game, it's the same as a half-hour program 
which allows you to show, you know, in this example, five different uh, shows. It also makes for a slightly richer experience since this is all we're showing. We can collect the images through the broadcast feed and the title. So three different ways to, uh, to go through, through the content. Next is carousels. We're used to seeing carousels in connected TV, right? This is a common paradigm that came through phones, iPads, and now connected TVs. A few things about carousels from a design perspective, okay? Carousels can either, the whole carousel can move while the focus point stays fixed, or the focus point can move and scroll along the carousel. In the design you saw, the focus point was fixed, the carousel moved, okay? When designing carousels, also limit the amount of content you put in there. You do not want to scroll forever. You will lose the, us lose the user, okay? So pick a number of titles, 25, maybe 20, um, that are in a carousel. If there's more, create another row, okay? But also make sure there's enough in there to necessitate even having a carousel, right? Or you could just show a grid of, of content that's on the screen. Carousels also, most common is a horizontal, but surely you've seen them in connected TV or in some of the MVP apps where there's a T concept, where there's a focus point in the middle, the uh, vertical roll scrolls, and then you can go across from a time perspective across the right. That's called an L or a T or a, a cross carousel. From a widgets perspective, the most common widget um, that we have in the design is called an accordion. So in an accordion widget, the kind, of the, the, the kind of the key thing here is to note that a television is considered a screen, right? It's not considered a page. So all of the navigation should be done from a screen to screen perspective. So from an accordion widget, you have a, a, a box that has the overview of the description. You click more, plus, down arrow, the box stays the same, the content changes, okay? You don't want to have a web page design where you're scrolling down where half of the page goes up and down. To a user on a television, that they, they will get lost. A computer, website, a web page, phone app, we're, we're all used to that, swiping up and down. Television designs, page by page, screen by screen. Uh, something that you may not realize is that televisions still have overscan, right? Which means that your design should have a safe area around the outside because you never know if the, t the TV is actually going to come in on the actual UI design. So a typical thing that we use is about 5% around the, around the edge. So in other words, the 95% the is your safe area. You know that will be shown. 5% could very well go over. So don't put anything out there that will be crossed over. Text and fonts, okay? You can basically use any font you want, all right, in these designs. Um, we recommend against lightweight fonts, we recommend against serif fonts, but you can use any font, okay? Bigger is better for what you can see. Most common is white fonts. And the other thing to take note of is how many different sizes of your fonts, right? In most designs, you don't want to have more than about four sizes, three or four sizes of your font, okay? In the example that we showed, there was four, okay? And occasionally highlights and, and, and whatnot, but it's typically white and typically big. Graphics, graphics and images. So as you can see, this is a web paradigm, it can be a very rich experience, right? TV is a rich experience, so you want to have a lot of graphics, you want to have a lot of images um, for the experience. The one thing that we press on the most is to use vector-based graphics, right? Vector-based graphics are very lightweight, and often, like in a carousel paradigm, as you scroll through, one expands, and you don't want to have two images, right, that are JPEGs that you're loading, trying to go through a quick, quick, quick scroll, right? Using vector-based graphics, they expand quickly. Uh, and, and, and works well. Whoop. Next, we want to talk about some of the interactivity. So interactivity, there's now the ability for a broadcast stream, right? Typically one way to interact with the consumer. First thing you go to, advertising, right? Advertising, you know, we call it the more button. 
right? The OK button. Now the user has the ability, they don't have to, but they have the ability to click more, okay? So there's a couple different advertising paradigms that we've seen. Again, we've seen these and been deploying these in Europe for six or seven years now, and now this is available to us here in the US. This example is a banner ad, very simple. As the, as the ad advertisement is going through, ad pops up, you got the more button. Typically we'll come back with some sort of coupon code, directions, or more instructions. An L screen ad, right? There's been many different trials with how L screen ads are working. You shrink, this, you shrink the video player at about 75%. You put the ad around it. And again, typically a more button, right? An okay button, a show me more. So that you have the ability to interact with the TV through the ad. The ad campaigns that are most popular with this are car ads, as you might guess, right? Because if you are interested in that car, you now have the ability to go see more about that car. We have seen these ads um, increase what a typical web paradigm with time on site, anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute, of people will interact with these ads if they're interested in the car. What's happening is you are coming from your broadcast experience and now going to a microsite. You're going to a web page, right? So you can repurpose web page content to show on the television. Now, when you're doing that, make sure your colors are similar, make sure that your video is going to, uh, has a high enough resolution and can be streamed, but you now have the ability to repurpose web content. The example I gave is for advertising. This has been used in many different areas from a call to action perspective, breaking news, news notification, click OK. The car chase is now on the TV that you've been streaming on from your webcam. Right? So people are repurposing web content onto the television using this technology and using this type of interactivity because you have this ability with an HTML5 player. And last is the on-screen notifications. With ATSC3, you have the ability at the frame level to send notifications to the users. So this example that we have is a news alert, breaking news, click OK. The, the content now switches to you know, your news site, to whatever programming that you have for news. The video is still playing in the background. Viewer comes back, show continues, or your show has been continuing on. So it's simply an overlay on top of the player that was playing, right? So the use, there's many, many use cases. When you're designing notifications, however, you, there is a lot of testing that we've done on where to put the notification and also where to put focus, right? So if the user has opted in to get notifications, the focus goes to it required to do something. If they've opted, if they've not opted in, so in other words, it's something that the broadcaster is sending to them, like an ad, the focus does not go there, it's annoying, it goes away after five seconds, life is good. Notifications are something to be very careful with and, and to test often, because people have very dramatic feelings about pop-up ads, right, and notifications. And so that is a quick run through of the design, the design program that we put together, the app that we have. We also have a book that we have, a design guideline book that goes with this. And does all the tips and tricks of how to design these apps for ATSC3 and interactivity. That will be uh, released in about 30 days. If you reach out to me, I can get that book to you, or uh, So Vang from, if you know So from the NAB, uh, who is involved in this, can also get you access to that guide. That's it. Thank you.